welcome to a session that we're putting together with the amazing lady in Florida, Carolyn Edlin from Artsy Shark. Uh, we're actually going to sit down and combine our, our mindset to try and help people through the most difficult situation I think the planet has ever seen, and particularly for arts. And we're calling these sessions that we're doing surviving and thriving in this particular era that we're in. So Caroline, welcome. It's great to see you. Thank you, Graham. You know, I was, you are so right. I was thinking about this earlier. You and I are virtually on the opposite side of the world from each other. And yet we are dealing with a common problem that artists are facing all over the world. So I think we're having a conversation that's, that everyone can relate to. That's not usual, but this, these are very strange times. And I think that it's just a privilege to be with you and to be speaking with you about things that artists can do mm -hmm. while they're facing this strange downtime, while they're stuck, that are really positive and constructive things. So thank you for having me on. Oh, that's fantastic. And, and you also work with an amazing organization in New York called the Clark Hewlings Foundation, which is basically there to educate artists and to teach them how to better manage their careers. And we're going to be speaking about uh, Penelope and Elizabeth as we, as we go through this particular session, because uh, they, they really do a fantastic job. But today's subject is about storytelling. Um, what, what's your experience as far as the importance of storytelling uh, and what the advice that you give to artists for a start? Oh my gosh, I think, I think the story that you tell your, your brand story, the narrative story about what inspires you, uh, why you do what you do, why it's important to the world and why people should buy from you is one of the most compelling things about your art. And I think that it is the reason that people buy from you. Um, you know, you mentioned the Clark Hewlings Fund and I collaborate with them all the time. They are an amazing organization. And one of the core subject areas that they talk about is brand story, mm -hmm. is working on that all important story that you're gonna share with the world. It's, it's not your artist statement. It's not your internal feelings. Mm -hmm. It is what do you have to say to the world and specifically to other people that's going to resonate with them and that's going to connect with them. And, you know, I think you and I know because we both work with artists all the time uh, and we help artists tell their stories all the time. In fact, Color in Your Life is like the highest form of storytelling. And you as the guide help the artist tell the story and you help the, the listener and, and the viewer hear the story. And I mean, that's just gotta be a great honor to do because what you are doing for artists is one of the most important things that they have to share with the world other than their visual art. The part and parcel of uh, what Color In Your Life does is that we, uh, we enable an artist to be able to tell a story to a global audience, which, which normally, you know, you're, you're either regional or national. And the reason I put this together, you know, over a decade ago was I thought, well, how do we utilize the internet and how to utilize TV and public television broadcasting to be able to put that together and, and hence Come On Your Life came about. And part of that story was, funnily enough, is that I'm being an artist as well, but I love writing a Harley Davidson and I thought, well, how do we take people on the journey around the world with, you know, to, to get them to certain spots? I mean, I'm just sort of not turning up on the door and knocking on the door. And I thought the Harley Davidson was a great way to do that. So. Um, in conjunction with that, yeah, I mean, everybody, everybody sort of says when I, they see me in an airport or somewhere, they go, you're the guy on the bike. I go, yeah, I'm the guy on the bike, but what's the show about? And they go, well, it's about art. And I, so yes, I, just, I will be honest with you. I was secretly hoping that you would start this video with that motorcycle because <laughs> it's your, you know, that's what people know about you. And, and you're so right. It's part of your story, Graham. And that's what people remember about you. And I think that you've you've led into what the the purpose of stories mm -hmm. is so that you become memorable. Yes. And so people know who you are. You identify yourself in that authentic way. And for you it yeah, it's you on that Harley. And I love that. And and one of these days I'm gonna get you you know, in a video <laughs> doing that. <laughs> Maybe you'll be in the back of the Harley. But um, yeah, so I, I I love that I love that intro into what artists themselves 
can do to, to understand what their story is, to create their story, to share their story. Um, again, I think yours is like the highest form. That video actually coming into the studio, showing a, a little behind the scenes in the life of, of the artist yeah. is, is a very intimate look into how artists create, why they do what they do, who are these people? You know, people out there who collect art and who buy art, well, they really secretly want to be an artist. If you could, you know, ask them, if you could do anything in the world that you want, what would it be? I bet a lot of them would say I'd be an artist because that's a very exciting and glamorous career. It sounds like it. You know, we're not gonna tell them the true story about how your car is 10 years old and you know, you got uh, wiped out at the last show in a, in a hurricane, but um, we wanna keep that mystique going. And so I think that that's partly what your show does. Your show is only about art. Your show is only about, you know, going into the background and the story behind the work. And it just gives that fascinating look into, into the, the story behind the work. And when you buy the art and when you own the art and you know the artist because you've seen them and you've heard their story on your show or, or in person or on their website, you'll tell that story and you as the collector i believe add the next chapter to the story of the art by owning it by where you hang it by what you do with it is it a, is it a gift you know it becomes part of the of the provenance of that piece of art mm. and so it's i think a gift that the artist gives to the collector is the story behind the art that goes with the physical piece so that every time they look at it, they're going to appreciate that. And so that's why I feel that your contribution is so important. Um, you know, it's not everything that an artist can do, but I think that that is really the ultimate, is, is to get the whole story as well as the physical art and to be able to appreciate all of that. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I have found that um, particularly when you do shows as a professional artist, with both, both you and I have been an art, is that, uh, you only, when it goes back to normal, of course, you might have two or 300 people standing in a gallery, one artist and one director, and you're supposed to get around to all those people to speak to them about your story. And what we've found is that the Colour in Your Life series playing on a TV, in a gallery or a trade show, enables you to focus on the people that are around you, but the story is still being told about who you are. So you can't really see that in the magazine, but you can have 50 people watching the television not 50 people reading one article in a magazine. So that's the reason it's very advantageous as well, so. Right. You know, it's interesting because you and I, coincidentally, have worked with um, an artist in common that we both know. And the reason that I mention her, her name is Anita Navar, and she lives in Queensland at the beach, which mm -hmm. I love because I also live at the beach on the other side of the world. So she and I are both beach bums, but, um, Anita has a really compelling story and coincidentally, we've been working together on her story and how to tell it. And there are some really interesting things, I think, that are lessons for artists. And this is certainly something you could do at home if you're stuck at home, if you have the time to work on your business as well as work on your art. And I think that it's something um, that's so important. Artists should think about it is what is my authentic story behind the work that I do? Her art, uh, she calls herself a pop erotic painter, um, a sexuality ally and, uh, and a love junkie. So her art is, is, is very um, sexual, it's very free, it's, it's uh, graphic, but it's not pornographic. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's art that makes a statement and she shares her history of coming from a very repressed, I think, religious cult that she grew up in, where she was shamed, she was abused, she was um, had a lack of self-worth and was actually suicidal at times. So she really went through a very difficult time in life. And the honesty and authenticity that she shares in telling this true story has brought her an audience from people around the world one of her, uh, I won't say causes, but one of her um, great interests is working with the LGBTQ audience 
and being an advocate and uh, an artist who speaks um, about them sharing their own stories and being who you are, loving who you love and owning her art, which celebrates being empowered as part of that community. Now, her story is not the same as many of the stories of the people who are interested in what she does, but the feeling that they had was the same. They may have come from a background where they were afraid to say who they were. They were felt a sense of shame. They identify with what she explains in her story. And so there's a great, um, I think, uh, intersection between what she does, what her art says, and how people feel about their own lives. And the other half of her story is a, a very positive story of great empowerment. Because what she's saying to people is, be who you are, you should be respected as a human being, celebrate you know, who you are and what you love. And, and so it's such a positive thing that people love her imagery, they wanna live with it, they wanna own it, they wanna be part of her tribe. And so I know she's gonna be on your show. I'm very excited about seeing that. And I understand um, that uh, she's, she's got a very interesting setting, <laughs> possibly a gay club that she's gonna be doing, which I think is marvelous. But, uh, you know, the, the, um, I think the important part you know, of, of what her art is about is her story, and that's where she's, she's gaining her audience. And then she said to me the other day, I'm writing a book. And I see that as something that is incredible because it is a major statement and it is a major step, just like doing a video with your show, is standing up and saying, this is who I am and I want to show this to the world. So, you know, I want to, I want to congratulate her um, and I want to congratulate you also for being such a great advocate and for introducing me to her because she adores you. She loves what you're doing and she can't wait to be part of, you know, of your organization. Yeah, she's a fantastic girl. And and in saying that, I, I love to send people to you because you have a huge amount of uh, background, wisdom, knowledge when it comes to the arts and helping people out. And obviously working with Elizabeth and Penelope from the Clark Hewlings Foundation uh, is really, really important because that's what you guys do. You help to empower people to a level that they're probably not aware of. They And, and, I, and I think knowledge obviously is power. And I say a good majority of the artists that, that we work with look at it as something that they love, but they don't look at it as a business. And that's what you impart on them as they come into your field, is that you teach them how to take that from a passion and turn it into a business as well. So I think it's incredibly important what you do. Yeah, I think you and I do the same thing. We work on empowering people to run their own businesses, to control their business and their future, and you know, to, to have a vision and to be able to work towards it, knowing what they're doing, you mm -hmm. know, and, and getting the benefit of all of the support from, uh, from you, from Natasha, from the people that you work with, and also the team that I work with. And you know what I also love about what we're doing right now is, you know, in a sense, I could say, oh, well, I'm competing with Graham, but I'm not really. We are allies and we're advocates for artists. And so when we get together and work on encouraging artists and helping artists and advising artists, you know, you can never have too much of that. Everyone needs as much support and as big of a network as possible. So I'm just really, really pleased to be part of yours. Yeah, and I think the, um, the theme about what we're going to be talking about uh, over time in these difficult situations is once again, strive and, th and thrive. And if, and if anybody wants to come and see Caroline, they can go to artsyshark.com, of course, and then the uh, the Clark Healings Foundation, and go into the Clark Healings Foundation and have a look at their website. So we have a landing page in there as well, that you can uh, obviously see a lot of what's going on. They educate you, and that's so important. As Anita said, when she got back to me after talking to you, she's gone, oh my God, she said, Caroline's amazing. She said, she just imparted information to me that I had no clue about. And she said, it's going to help me so much in, in what I need to do to put my career together even in, 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 in better than what it is now. So thank you for what you've been doing. Thank you. Yeah, I think that the more we can help artists and the more they help themselves, the stronger and more sustainable their, their businesses will be. So 
Well, yeah. Was. And that's something that's great to work on right now. So thank you. Yeah. Survive and thrive. I love that title. It's a perfect theme for, for these days. Thank you, Carolyn.